All right, and we're going to continue. Legacy. 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 Very good. Shelter. 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 Rummaged. 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 Very good. Now this one is more of a phrase. Mental suffering. Mental, Mental suffering. suffering. Mental, Mental suffering. Mental suffering. Converted. 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 Dwellings. 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 Very good. Field work. Field, Field work. work. Field grief. 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 Dismantle. 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 Nostalgic. 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 Modified. 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 Excellent. Estates. 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 Poignant. 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 Very good, very good. So I'll go over these phrases later, but that's some of the tricky vocabulary uh, in the, the short reading uh, from chapter one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to give you a definition, uh, do so, something similar to what we did last time, just to, as a warm up. I'll give you a definition of one of these words. And I want you to either put your hand up like this or click the emoji if you can guess the definition. Uh, and I don't think I'm gonna do all of them, but I think I will I'll do at least 50%. Here we go. So when you, if you think you know the definition, just click the emoji button on your, whoops, went to the wrong one. Click the emoji button uh on zoom everybody ready yeah ready to go yeah okay. yeah okay uh pain from loss pain from loss where click, click the emoji if you know what it is raise your hand for with the emoji pain from loss Ryan. Uh, Faride. Ryan. Say it again. Pain for loss. A pain from loss. From loss? Mm -hmm. mm, I, I think it's when, when you. Which, which feel... one of these words? No, no, no. Which one of the words, Faride? Mm, okay. Mm. You, you, you put up the your hand, so that's why I called on you. <laughs> um, hang on one second. Perla, what do you think it is? Mental suffering. It's for, for race. Very close, but mental mm -hmm. suffering can be from a lot of things. So mm -hmm. pain from loss, specifically pain from loss. Oh, I see a lot of hands up. Uh, Glaucian, I think you were the, the next uh, one. Fighting it. Not it's point not yet, no. no. Um, I'll go with um, estates. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I'll I'll call on you, everybody. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Tatiana. Yeah, nostalgia. No. Nostalgia is kind of the opposite. Nostalgia is 
is like uh, a fond memory. Uh, so it's yeah. not pain. Mm. Uh, but it is involving nostalgia does involve memory. So grief. who said grief? Grief is um oh, no Norexi, that's the right answer. Ding ding ding. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> grief? Grief. Yes. Okay. I did Tell us my, Norexi. My, my my work. <laughs> you did. You yeah. did. No, you did. Good job. Good so job. yeah. Good job. So I'm going to show you a way to conjugate the word grief. Grief is a noun to experience grief, the pain from loss. Somebody, somebody dies and you feel grief. That's the noun. But to ver the, uh, the verb to G-R-I-E-V, grieve, grieve, grieve. to grieve is the verb. So someone is grieving they're experiencing grief, the pain from loss. All right. So when the class is when this class is over, you will grieve because the class is so much fun, right? Um, uh, a it's a feeling. It is a feeling. It is a feeling. Just a feeling, or, or an action? Uh, yes. Thing? Yeah. It, it is an experience, a feeling, a very profound sense of loss, grief. Mm, right. Okay. And many different cultures have different rituals of grief or state way, ways they uh, express grief. Wait. All right. um, okay, next word. I'll cross that one off. There we go. Next word is, okay. Everybody ready? Yes. Um, Modify. I haven't even given it. <laughs> You're guessing already, Franklin. I haven't even said it yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> important, important or significant. Important or significant. Hit the emoji if you if you got it. Um... Hit, hit the emoji when you're ready. Don't rush it. If you yeah. think you know, put the hand raising emoji up. Phrase. Important or significant? Uh, Tatiana. I think it's uh, Rachmet. Which one? Rummage. Rummage. Rummage? No, nope. no, no. Well, rummaging is looking for something. It can be looking for something important. So I guess that's kind of close. Garçon, garçon. Mm, okay. Garçon. Uh, yeah, garçon, you raised your hand. Go for it. Garçon, uh, I think you're muted. You gotta uh, un unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Carson. Uh, you can type it in the chat if you. Uh, I'll go to Marie, Marie Lombard. Converted? Not converted. No converted. Not converted. Uh, I'm going to go to somebody else. Here we go. Dwelling. No, we're guessing again. We're doing a lot of guessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so a synonym of important or significant. Um, uh, let's see. Mm. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It has a silent G. The G in the word is silent. Shelter? I don't know. 
But the G in the word is silent. Gar Garcon, if you can't unmute yourself, just put your, um, oh, I see some more hands raised. Uh, Nerexi, you ready? Uh, I think it's dwelling, but it's not. No, it's not dwelling. No. Um, I'll give it to you. It's poignant. 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 Wow. Yep. Garcon, I, I know you, you haven't been able to unmute yourself. Was that the one you were going to say? Uh, no. You heard okay. me? I, I don't know. Oh, now we hear you. Now we hear you. Now we oh, hear yeah, you. Yeah, my, 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 my earphone is uh, something. Oh, okay. My... No problem. No problem. So we've done, all right. So we've done grief. We've done grief. We've done poignant. Poignant. Um, Uh, let's see. I'll do another one. Okay. Foreseeable, likely, likely foreseeable. What is foreseeable? foreseeable? If you can foresee, to see in the future. Oh, oh okay. Oh, um. Marie. I, I, I know. Yeah. Marie, you got it, Marie. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Marie, got it. Predictability. Predictability. Or I should say, well, I should give it a, as the uh, adjective. Predictable. Predictability. Yeah, the adjective. Able to foresee. Able to guess what's going to happen if something is predictable. Um, does anybody have a prediction for the Super Bowl yeah. on Sunday? Who do you think is going to win, Nerexi? Oh, no. LA or I, I don't Cincinnati? Know. Yeah, no, I don't know. But, <laughs> I... but that's a way you'd use the word, predictable. Yeah. People who gamble like to think of things and predict, uh, like to think of predictability. Yeah, oh, the People weather. Who, yeah, yeah. If uh, you want to invest your money somewhere, you want to think of what's a good investment? Predictability, looking mm -hmm. into the future. All right, uh, let's go for, aggression, aggression, uh, or anger. Natalia. Ferocity. Yes, you got it. Good job. Ferocity. Ferocious. <clears throat> Ferocity. All right. Um, now, two of these words are very, very close in meaning. Two of these words are very close in meaning. So either one, I'd say, well, all right. To change or adapt. Two of them are synonyms. I'll give you, this is kind of a two-in-one question. To change or to adapt? Converted. Yes, converted is one. And another word that means change or adapt? Modify. Yes, correct. Yeah, so modify. to modify or to convert. Uh, they're not always used in the same place, like converted, sometimes... Um, if we're talking about technology, we say convert the file from a Word to PDF to Google Doc, whatever it is, the type of file on a computer. Um, that's converted. We also use converted if somebody changes their religion. They convert their religion. Modify usually is used, also means to change, but it is usually referring to a small change. Like um, I modify, somebody could say, I modified my shirt. Uh, yeah. I modified this, that, or the other, like a small change. Yeah. What about trans modification. Transform? transform? You could say transform, but a transform isn't 
the same as modify. Transform is like a total change. Mm. Like, tr you know, like this word, trans. Tom. Usually T-R-A-N-S, transform, mm. translate, mm. transgender, mm -hmm. uh, transnational. Uh, so that's like a total, complete change. Okay. Okay. So modify is like a small change. That's so that's where convert to convert to modify. They're really you could say they're synonyms to convert or to modify. Um, I'll do one more. One more. Here we go. One more. Uh, a happy memory from the past missing the past missing the past thinking of happy memories glaucian nostalgic yes very good nostalgic mm -hmm. very good very good nostalgic. i like it i like it nice <laughs> all right everybody so that should be yeah. some good uh scaffolding a good foundation for the reading uh, teacher uh, yes. can you repeat the uh uh, mm -hmm. poignant, uh, uh, poign what poignant, 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 significant what, what or yes. important, significant uh, or important. Significant. But teacher, yeah. poignant is uh, a feeling. Yes, uh, set. Feeling. Um, well, it's more like a way to describe something. Like if you read a book, you read Adjective. a book, and you find the book was really great. You listen to a song and you think the words of the song are really powerful. You can say, ah, the song is poignant. The book poignant. is poignant. poignant. It's usually a way to describe art. So it you can be adjective? Adjective? Oh, no, it is an adjective. Yep. Yeah, it is an adjective. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to get rid of my background so I can use my document camera and we'll read uh, chap the reading of chapter one together. Here we go. Uh, let's get rid of my, um, first I'm gonna leave this share. Okay, go back to, I'm gonna get rid of my background and go to the document cam. So my ba background is disappearing and now we are going to, whoop, There it is. So now we're looking at the book. Okay. All right. So let me. All right. Can everybody see okay here? Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So we all. I'll start with my, I'm gonna actually adjust where my book is and where the camera is on my desk here. Bear with me. Sliding that over, very nice, okay. So Home and Travel by Margaret Mead, okay? And you can see a lot of these vocabulary words are the ones highlighted in the blue, okay. So I'll read this first paragraph, and then I'll ask a volunteer to read the second and third paragraphs at the bottom. Here we go. Okay. Home and Travel by Margaret Mead. The need to define who you are by the place in which you live remains intact, even when that place is defined by a single object, like the small blue vase that used to mean a home to one of my friends, the daughter of a widowed trained nurse who continually moved from one place to another. The Bushmen of Kalahari Desert in Africa often build no walls when they camp in the desert. They simply hollow out a small space in the sand, but then they bend a slender young tree into an arch to make a doorway, an entrance to a dwelling, 
as protected from invasion as the walled estates of the wealthy are, or as Mataki in Manila is, where watchmen guard the rich against the poor. So there's a lot in that paragraph, but the topic of this passage is this woman right here. It's, well, I should say it's written, it's autobiographical. And the topic is uh, how people define their home, where they live. And give, it gives different examples. It's written by this anthropologist, Margaret Mead. And she's, she spent her life living in different places. Uh, an anthropologist, well, actually, I should ask, does anybody know this word, anthropologist? Yes, I know. Oh, tell, uh, tell us, Nirexi. Uh, uh, anthropology is um, when you study different contexts about the culture, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how you live, how you eat, how you... Uh, wearing the 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 dress the mm -hmm. clothes uh it, it's everything when you live in a, spe a specific uh context uh in the war yeah you, you nailed it really it's it's really a study of different cultures in different places of the world and anthropologists study culture of different people different societies good stuff um, do I have a volunteer to read this next paragraph right here? Anybody? Yes. Can I go? Okay, go for it, Tatiana. No. I yeah. realized. <clears throat> I realized how few things are needed to make a home. When I took my seven years old daughter on her first sea budget, the she uh, convert. Troop the ship, ship, a converted troop ship, <clears throat> troop ship. Sorry, I lost my voice. A converted, <laughs> converted troop ship. Troop ship, troop ship was crowded with over a thousand students. They were bunkered below where the troops had slept. While Katy and I shared one cabin with six other members of the staff. Katy climbed. Into climbed, 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 climbed into her upper bird. Bird? Uh, yes, yes. Bird opened yep. a little package that had been given to her as going, going away press away, and arranged then into a circle around her. Then she let. She leaned, she leaned, she leaned mm -hmm. over the side of the bird and say, now I'm ready to see the ship. ship? The ship, correct. Good, good, good. Let's stop right here. Mm -hmm. um, the word birth in this case means like we'd say a bunk, like a bunk beds. I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to move the, uh, it, it's like two beds on top of each other. Anybody ever travel in a sleeper train, in a train overnight? Yeah. Yes. The, the, the way the beds are, will be one on top of the other. So the top you climb up and to sleep, that's what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's a, it's a ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's only two sentences here in this next paragraph. Um, would anybody like to read these two? Me, teacher. Go for it, Erica. Home. Home, I learned, can be anywhere you make it. Home is also, <clears throat> sorry, the place to wish to come back again and again. They're really poignant. Poignant, yep. Poignant. Mm -hmm. Acting is the one that may be forever. All right. Beautiful. Very nice. So even though that's only two sentences, Remember, a paragraph is what is a group of sentences connecting one idea. So that only has two sentences. Why did the writer choose 
choose to make that a really short paragraph. The, this last sentence, the really poignant parting is the one that may be forever. What does that mean? The really poignant parting is the one that may be forever. Remember, poignant is what? We just went over it. Important? Significant. Yes. Yes. Important, significant. Very good. Yeah. Good short-term memory there, Tatiana. Nice. Okay. So the poignant parting is the one that may be forever. So a parting, it means you're leaving forever. Why is that poignant? Because it is a memory that, that can remain you, you home or family. Exactly. Well, yeah, it means you're not coming back. Mm -hmm. You're leaving and you're not coming back. Okay. Um, who would like to read this last paragraph? Thank you. Uh, Marie, go for it. Okay. In all my years of field work, each place where I have lived has become home. Each small object I have brought with me, each arrangement on a shell of thin cans holding beads or salt for trade or crayons for the children becomes the mark of home. When is it this mantle on the last morning a morning that is marked by the greed of those who have little hope for a share of whatever is left behind, as well as by the grief of feeling that someone is living forever. On that morning, I weep. I weep. Weep. Mm -hmm. I too, I I too know that this departure, unlike my forays from home as a child is likely to be forever. All right, very good. Now I'm gonna adjust my camera here. So you, the homework was to finish just uh, a little bit right here in, um, whoops, just the, whoops. The homework was just to finish the, uh, the next uh, two pages right here. And mo uh, most, most people here in the class were able to, uh, to take a picture and attach it. A few people didn't, but that's not a problem. I'm, not, I'm gonna adjust, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my, I'm gonna leave the document camera right there. And go back to my background. And I think I'm gonna choose a different background today. What am I feeling like? All right, I'm gonna choose um, a Lorenzo Pace sculpture. Okay, so this is um, uh, this is this background. Nothing to do with the reading, but this is a, a sculpture in New York City done by the artist Lorenzo Pace uh, called "The Triumph of the Human Spirit." Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to use my the vocabulary word. This sculpture by Lorenzo Pace uh, in New York is titled "Triumph of the Human Spirit," and it's a very poignant sculpture. So. That's, I chose that just so I could use the vocabulary word in a sentence, how, uh, how it's used in the reading. So Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, did she, <clears throat> why didn't she need to live in <clears throat> one place for her entire life? Why didn't she want to live in one place for her entire life? Most people have the dream of settling down raising the family and being part of a single community. She was very different. Why didn't she want that? <clears throat> um, it's because she's anthropology, so she has to go the different uh, parts and different cultures. I think mm. it's for her job. Perhaps, yeah, she, she had a career as an anthropologist. Um, and uh, Franklin, what, what were you gonna say? I, I think uh, the anthropologists need to go to a different country to study mm -hmm. his country. Uh, I think, I think is that. 
you know you don't yeah. stay you don't stay in the count you don't live in the the problem with this these people you don't know uh, about this right 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 now i'm going to put everyone in breakout rooms and i'm going to give a question uh the items in the reading where margaret mead said what makes a home she would talk about objects yep she would say a, a glass jar can be a home uh crayons for the children can make a home um do you believe this is you personally do you believe that uh you can make your home anywhere in the world or like Margaret Mead, or do you need uh, a found a traditional foundation of you know family, community, and a physical house or apartment to make a home? Do you yourself believe home in, in the uh, the euphemism home is where I lay my hat? If you wherever you sleep, you can you can adapt and change and live anywhere. That's Margaret Mead. Where do you fall on that? Do you believe you could make your home anywhere? Or do you believe you need a foundation of family and community to stay the same? So that's, does everybody understand the question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, All right, yeah. good, good. So I'm gonna put everyone in some quick breakout rooms just for, I'd say about 10, 15 minutes to discuss that question. Here we go. Uh, let's see how many people today. Yeah, I'll do four breakout rooms. Here we go. Interesting question. So do you believe you need traditional family, society, and a physical home, like a house with walls, to have a home, to, to call the place your home? Or are you like Margaret Mead and you can make a home anywhere? All right. So this is perfect. We got four people in each breakout room. Everybody get a chance to share. Practice your speaking. Here we go. Okay, you can join your breakout rooms now. Okay, Garcon, Cleomane, you can join your breakout rooms. Uh, Cleo, there we go. See, my timing, talking to her, she was just passing through. Uh, although she's been, uh, she'd been passing through for more than two weeks. To prove to me that this was true, she hum. I don't know this word. She rummaged, rummaged through a tote bag and a manila envelope and finally unfolded a sheet of typing paper and broke out her photograph. photograph. Oh my God. Yes. My battery is low. Teacher, you mute.
Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. I was muted. I'm sorry. I was asking who was reading, who wanted to read next. I, I myself was muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, why can't anybody answer me? Uh, Cleo Main, would you like to read the next paragraph? <laughs> or Tavares, Tavares, Tavares really wants to read. Go for it. Tavares and then Cleo Main, you can read later. Tavares really, really wants to go. Okay. Go for it. They, they were not preacher. Oh, okay, sure. Of family, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, you're muted. You're muted. He's mute. Oh, there we go. They were not pictures of family. Keep going. Okay. They were not pictures of family or friends. They were not, not pictures of family or friends or even a dog or cat. It's eyes brown red in, in this Flash bulbs. Light. They were. Of a house. I, oh, I, clear man, I think we've lost the connection. We've lost your connection. I think uh, we lost we lost the connection. We can't hear you well. Sorry, I think the computer there's a connection problem. Um. Wait. We are you still there? I, I think there's a connection problem. We couldn't quite hear you. We we couldn't hear you. It was it was going away after house. Um I think there's a delay. No, there's a delay in your uh, connection. We can't hear you. Yeah, we, we can't hear you very well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Let's get another. Um, not your fault. Not your fault, Cleo Man. It's okay. Um, Tavares, do you want to finish after house? Yeah, yeah. It was like a thousand houses. Uh, Tavares, you got to unmute yourself. Okay. Barely. Uh, 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 okay. It was like a thousand house in the ranch towns, not suburb, not city, but somewhere in between, with aluminum siding and the check, check lines fence, a north driveway running up on a car garage and patch of the backyard. The house as well was yellow. Yellow. I looked on the back for a date or name, but neither as there. There was not need for discussion. I I I knew what knew. She, I, knew. I knew I knew what she was trying to tell me. For it, uh, uh, something I had often felt. She was not a a trifle alone. Drift. A drift, a drift, and an a no a no nine Anon anonymous anonymous. All all true, her bags although, and mm -hmm. although her bags and her 
uh, record with the cream grime 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 should drink increase should, ha should do increase had uh, a head man me believe she was she had a house or at least once upon a time red had one inside her curtains a coat a stove a potter potler you Pot are holders potholders pot potlerders you are where you live she was somebody all right all right uh there's a lot that both cleomane and tavares I read this long paragraph. There's a lot of probably new vocabulary words. Uh, potholders are uh, something you you put on your hands to to touch something hot when you're cooking. So this woman who was living in a bus station in New York yeah. had some had many of these items showing that she used to live somewhere indoors. So something happened in her situation. Uh, all right. Um, Let's see who would like to read the next uh the next paragraph go for it for the day okay. i've never been very good okay it's part of chris yes i uh yes please uh, i've never i've never been very good at looking at the big picture talking the global view and it, i've always been a person with and overactive sensor or place the legacy of an irish grandfather so uh, irish 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 grandfather so it is natural that the thing that seems most wrong with the world to me right now is that there are so many people with no home. I'm not si simply talking about shelter from the element or so, their square meal and they or a million others to which the welfare people can send the check. How to I know that all these are important for survival. I'm talking about a home. Very nice. Okay, we've got three more paragraphs to go. Who wants to volunteer for the next paragraph right here? Uh, I'll read. I'll read this next one right here. Okay. Home is where the heart is. There's that phrase. Home is where the heart is. There's no place like it. I love my home with a ferocity totally out of proportion to its appearance or location. I love dumb things about it. The hot water heater, the plastic rack you drain dishes in, the roof over my head, which occasionally leaks, and yet it is precisely those dumb things that make it what it is. A place of certainty, stability. And here's that other vocabulary word, predictability. Predictability. Privacy for me and for my family. It is where I live. What more can you say about a place than that? That is everything now uh, i we can skip these last two paragraphs and uh move on oh wait marie did you want to read oh sorry okay no no it's okay i was gonna skip the last two paragraphs and uh right there just just to um just to move on no problem i'm gonna change and go i'm gonna change the uh Good job, everybody. Everyone's had a chance to practice their reading. And whoops. Yep. Can I read and you? what's that? Can I read? 
Five? Oh, you are you already had a chance to read Tavares. We already heard. <laughs> I, need, I need to read. I need to learn, please. I know. It's okay. You can read all day, Tavares. Okay. Let's all let's do let's move on. It's okay. <laughs> So I wanted I I um I wanted I know that's not the most exciting part of class, but I wanted everybody to get a chance to practice their reading aloud. So I'm going to go back to my Lorenzo Pace background here. That'll be the theme for today. All right. So before we take a break, the topic of uh, homelessness is the topic of this chapter. Now I'm going to show everybody what I've assigned for next week. We'll take a break very sh shortly, but first I'm gonna ask everyone to uh, follow me onto this, uh, the share here. So I'm sharing my screen and, whoops. So today the assignment was that was due was uh, the picture of page 11 after the reading of chapter one that we went over here in class today. And I've posted a new assignment right here, Richard Berry on homelessness. So I just assigned it this morning. Uh, here is what I'm asking you to do. With the topic of homelessness, this is a mayor, or I should say former mayor. He gives a lecture and he, talks about solutions that he came up with in his town uh, for homelessness to solve uh, because there were many, many homeless people in his town. Now, when you open up the video, I wanna show you, it's only 12 minutes long, but when you are listening, you I wanna remind everybody to press this button. CC. What is CC? What does that stand for? Subtitles. Closed captions. Closed captions. Right, right. So if I play his lecture. <laughs> oh. So when I press this, there we go. So when I, when I press that, it gives you the English to read to make it easier. Also, um, as I play this, tell me if it goes too fast. I don't hear what. Okay, well, hang on one second. Uh, let me optimize for sound and video. Optimizing for sound and video. That's right, it wasn't optimized. Hold on one moment. Okay, so everybody tell me, who can who tell me if he's speaking too fast or too slow? Here we go. Standing on a corner. And as you can see, he's holding a sign. And his sign says he wants a job. But if you look closer at the picture, you'll see he- Okay, now tell me is who finds it hard to follow? Raise your hand if it's a little fast for you. Okay, so this is why I wanna show you how to use this. So to read the subtitles, you press CC, that's closed captions. Now to slow it down, you click this, playback speed, go to whatever you want. If you want it slower, it can play slower. Standing underneath a blue sign. And that sign says, if you need help. If it's still too fast for you, you go back to playback speed and go at half speed. If you need food or shelter, or you'd like to. And if that's still too fast, you can actually make it slower. <laughs> now, if that's too fast, uh, okay, it doesn't go any slower. There's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> or if it if or if you want to make it really fast, you could do this. Double speed. Oh, 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 okay, you, nobody wants to do that, but you can just play with it. So that's what's great about a video like this. You can 
add the closed caption so you can read it. If it's too fast, go to the playback speed, adjust it to whatever you need. So uh, for this assignment, when you're watching the video, don't just watch it and say, oh, I don't understand anything. Play with it. Use the closed captions, use the playback speed, adjust it to whatever you need. All right, everybody ready for a break? Yeah, Let's take a break. Okay, so quick break here. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. Uh, stopwatch. I'm going to set this for. Uh, I'm going to set this for ten minutes. Okay, everybody, take a break. See you. Whoop. I'll see you in ten minutes. Okay, so we're back recording. Here we are. Now, the chapter in the textbook on homelessness for supplementary material, I like to introduce uh, a theory from Abraham Maslow. Um, uh, Abraham Maslow was a professor uh, at Brandeis University in the Boston area. If anybody knows, knows where that is, in uh, Waltham. And he came up with, whoops, he came up with this pyramid theory called the hierarchy of human needs. And this is what I want to use. Since I've already introduced the homework, I'm going to finish class by introducing Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. And I'm going to pick up the next class next, uh, ne next class on Wednesday with this. So as I introduce this, I'll show you uh, from bottom to top what Maslow's hierarchy of human needs are. So as human beings, we all need, we have needs, certain things that we need. Uh, the very most basic right here, he calls physiological. And uh, I can do the pronunciation with everyone. Can everyone follow me? Physiological. 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 Physiologic. Physiological. Physiological. Uh, these are tough words, but it's not my fault. It's his fault. This guy. It's his fault. <laughs> so, <laughs> examples of physiological are basic needs that human beings have. Um, and here they are. Can anybody give me a few examples right here? So breathing. Yeah. Breathing, water, sleep, oh, right. all these things. Mm -hmm. Some of these are complicated words, but ba basically, you know, the most basic things that we need as human beings are physiological. Uh, and then after our physiological needs are met, like having a home would be physiological, being able to sleep somewhere to sleep. Then, easy word, safety. 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 Now, safety doesn't mean just the uh, being free from the threat of physical danger. Um, who can read what this says? Security of body or employment or resource or mo morality or the family or the heart or property. Pro property. So, yeah, prop property, right. So the property. safety falls into a lot of things. So it doesn't mean just your physical safety. Having a job could be safety. Uh, resources. What if you live in a neighborhood where the air is um not clean to breathe that that would be a threat to safety a threat to your health morality what if you you, you live in a home where um it's not safe 
all of these things. So safety can fall under a lot of different things. Uh, let's see, and then right in the middle, love and belonging. And there's uh, different types of love and belonging right here. So the love, the needs of love from your partner, the needs of love from the family. So that's two images right there. And also friendship. I'm glad they put <clears throat> this is here. Basil talked about the need. Friendship is also a, a need <clears throat> right there. You, you need to have friends as well. All right. Now, up as we get closer, here's another word, esteem. Esteem. What is esteem? Life. It's, uh, I think, teacher, it's about uh, how we uh, feel about, about me. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I love it. How I feel about me. That's self-esteem or confidence. And also, uh, Glaucian, what I'm underlining here is respect of others, respect by others. So we, we also do need um, recognition from our peers, the people we work with, the people in our community. That's, that's also on the hierarchy of needs. If you don't feel like, if you work at a job where you don't feel like you're recognized, you don't feel like, for instance, a lot of students at El Centro work at Amazon. I, that's, a, that's a tough place to feel recognized, to feel esteem. You're working with a bunch of robots moving packages. Um, and then the very top, the very top, uh, I'll show you this vocab word, self-actualization. Morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, um, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts. This, this is really at the very, very top. It's where you you're really feel like you have a command of your life. You're doing what you want. You're expressing yourself create, uh, creatively. That's, that's the, the basic, uh, that's right at the top of the pyramid when you've got all those others <clears throat> in there. Now, I wanna finish today by asking everybody to look at one of these needs on Maslow's hierarchy and identifying um, if they have achieved one of these need one of these needs. It could be something that they feel like they have uh, received. Maybe you received. Uh, you're happy with your family. You're safe in your home. Um, you have to, you've achieved self-actualization. You found you know, the creativity that you want. It can be anything. Uh, it's tough in any situation, even if you're employed, financially stable, to really hit all of these and you know live that ideal life that you want. But it really is just the big picture. And I like to use this with homelessness because homelessness is an issue that focuses on the physiological at the bottom. If people are homeless, it's they don't have that foundation to reach those, those other needs that are right at the top. So I'm gonna put everyone into breakout rooms, but first identify one of these needs, self-actualization, esteem, love and belonging, safety or physiological. Identify one that you believe you have achieved, um, and then maybe talk about a few others. Maybe you haven't. Everyone's in a different situation. Uh, so we have students in class who are uh, have unpredictable living situations. We have students in class who have uh, more predictable living situations. So everybody's different. So, but identify one of these, and then bring it into the breakout room for smaller conversations. Uh, tell me when you're ready, just raise your hand when you've identified one of these words on the hierarchy that you're ready to talk about. Tell me, tell me when you're ready and then just raise your hands and I'll put you into breakout rooms.
Okay, three days ready. Three days ready for a conversation now. Everyone else is thinking, so it's not a race. <laughs> not a race. <laughs> I love looking at Frida. She's like, oh, I know, right now. <laughs> Perla and Tatiana are thinking, hmm, let me look on this for a minute. Give me some time. No problem. <laughs> and don't worry about this disappearing because we're, I'm going to begin next class with uh, the same conversation on Wednesday. I saw a few people taking pictures of the screen. Don't worry. We'll begin with this on Wednesday and I'm recording the class. So physiological, that's uh, food, shelter, home, safety, a place to sleep, safety, maintaining a job, sense of morality, sense of family, uh, physical health, emotional health, uh, love and belonging, family, friendship, intimacy, self-esteem, that's recognition by your peers at work. And then the very top self-actualization, that's when you feel like you've really <clears throat> done what you want with your life and you're, you're able to express yourself creatively. Okay, breakout room time, here we go. Okay, breakout rooms. No. No, I don't like that. 